right. Uh, it is 8.48 a.m. on July 27th, 2023. It is Thursday. Happy field day! <laughs> Ain't no party like a working party. Don't gotta do that no mo. So, I guess I'll do a little modalicious book club. Message to Garcia. So this is supposed to be, I guess kind of like a Grandpa Simpson rant. This is, first of all, that is Message to Garcia. It is a book by Marine Corps standards. I guess it would be like a novel by Marine Corps standards. It's, reading's hard and we eat crayons. Uh, it's a pamphlet. And and the the preface, I guess, preface, uh, explains that it, it was like an, it's published in the newspaper. It, it's, it's a pamphlet. So the whole thing is an explanation of or not really an explanation it was it, like I said it's a Grandpa Simpson rant uh, of uh, how Lieutenant Rowan Andrew Summers uh, yeah Lieutenant Andrew Summers Rowan delivered a message to General Garcia who's in charge of revolutionary forces in Cuba and you need the first 16 pages to explain that uh, he, he became Colonel Andrew Summers but you know back when he was a lieutenant, he delivered a message to General Garcia. Now, he had to have known who General Garcia was in order to deliver this message. Because to say, go find Garcia on the island of Cuba is a really stupid thing to say. And because this is, you know, it's required reading for all Marines, I had to read it when I was a young, enterprising PFC and it, it it bothered me greatly. I hate this book. Now it may have to do with my job. And my my MOS was embarkation logistics. So as a logistician, this pissed me off. Mainly because, like I said, this whole book is a a, a Grandpa Simpson rant about how. Uh, these young whippersnappers these days, they just don't, I don't understand them. That's pretty much it. So, like I said, in, in with my experience as a logistician, that's, it, it bothered me that they just said, here, take this message to Garcia, and he... Aye, aye, sir, and that was it. They dropped, uh, you know, Rowan was dropped off in Cuba without an escort or security, and he, three days he ended up on the other side of the island, delivered the message to the end. Uh, that's great if you're an officer. If you're an officer, you love these kind of stories because you have uh, an entire uh, uh, soldiery, I guess, service branch of unquestioning. Uh, troops, and that's the other thing they mentioned in the book is, you know, what this country needs is more individualists who never question and fall into line. Uh, okay, uh, again, logistics. If someone says message to Garcia, and I don't know who Garcia is, I'm going to ask some questions. If you order a tank and you tell me I need this tank or well a plane I need I need I need a tank I, I, I need a, uh, a seat I need a plane okay where are you going uh, when do you need it those are legitimate questions uh, uh, how, how long do you need a return flight when, uh, when do you need that return flight? How many people are going? Are you taking any carry-ons? Is, is there 
a body on the plane besides yourself? Um, is this is this a private flight? Do you, do you mind sitting in a window seat? Perfectly legitimate questions for the task you're given. Order me some Pop-Tarts. When do you need them? How many do you need? What flavor? When, when they get here, would you like them to be hot or cold? Perfect, legitimate questions. And if you don't want to, uh, you know, be follically challenged like myself, those questions need to be answered. And uh, again, this book, book, uh, this flyer says, well, I, I really wish young, young folks today would be as unquestioning as, uh, as Garcia was. He just got the job done. <clears throat> he didn't, he didn't answer, you know, ask questions. Well, uh, young workers are like toddlers. They're going to ask questions because they, they, they need to know these things for the future. You did, you did when you were younger. So you, you see a junior rank and you, hey, hey, I, go do some menial task and you know that they're usually going to question why because that's how that's how the operation works is you know uh can't go into combat without beans bullets and band-aids uh, as cliche as it is you need the logistical support to go into combat otherwise you're just rambo and things don't always work out for rambo in the real world whatever this book sucks. Like I said, if you're an officer and you need unquestioning troops, yeah, sure, this book is fantastic. Read this and learn. Yeah, yeah. Do what Garcia does and never question my authority. Okay? But I have to. I had I have to <clears throat> when, when when we deployed I guess the second time uh, the, the lieutenant in charge of uh, Marine Corps property said hey you're gonna make a list of everything you think you're gonna need for this deployment and I'm going to approve it since you guys are up next anything you can think of okay cool I need construction tools I need we're, we're gonna build the fob anyway we need table saws we need uh, gloves we need uh, you know all, all manner of tools reciprocating saws uh, I, did, I didn't bother getting a pneumatic nail gun because if, there, if there's no electricity whatever there was electricity but it, these are things that we're going to need when we get there instead of hey we're in Afghanistan There's a lot of sand. Where are the tents? I'm hungry. You need the support, and in order to get the support, you need to answer these stupid questions that uh, these young whippersnappers just can't seem to stop asking. And then there's the civilian question of, why are you spending my tax money on something I don't approve? It's not at all relevant to July 27th, 2023. Anyway, read this book. It'll only take you like, you know, 30 minutes if you're illiterate.